let's pull the train out of here. Just get, get, the, get the train out of here. This is me driving across the Southern California desert to see a mud puddle. I know, sounds like a niche interest, but this mud puddle is moving on its own, going across the desert at 20 feet per year. If you think this is weird, you're right, because no one has ever witnessed this happen ever before. It's baffling scientists. And it gets crazier, because the mud puddle started moving toward a major highway, a train track, a natural gas pipeline, and a high-speed fiber optic cable. Bit of a maniac, this mud puddle. If it had a name, it would be Kyle. This moving mud puddle has been threatening a bunch of critical infrastructure. I got in touch with the man in charge of saving the highway and one of the geologists who helped save the railroad to figure out what's going on, why this is happening, what they're all doing about this very unique problem, and of course, to go be on the yellow tape and see the mud puddle up close. We're just about getting into Nyland right now. So State Route 111 goes all the way from down in Mexico up past the Salton Sea. Wow, look, there's the Is it? Ooh, I just got does smell pretty Ooh. well. Yeah, it's a rotten egg Every smell. once in a while, you get that good whiff. There it is. The world's first mud spring ever documented to move. It's basically just this pool of water right here. It doesn't well, there's really- Well, there's a perched groundwater table. Over on the eastern side, there's a lot of rock that was put there because what the mud spring does is carves up the ground as it travels and leaves behind this giant sunken crater, which as you can imagine, is a bit dangerous to not fill in. As we stood there staring at this giant hole in the ground, gurgling like the planet talking to you, we learned the story of how the mud spring came to be. And along the way, I noted three particularly crazy moments. One was a time when the mud spring was over 100 feet across. Another was a time when the mud spring jumped 60 feet in a day. And the third was the most terrifying moment when the mud spring blew water 100 feet in the air. And so let's get to the story on our journey to figuring out why this darn thing is moving. I'm Diana, you're watching Physics Girl, and I love me a geology mystery. Like the massive magnetic stripe scientists found on the ocean floor, that was a whole thing. But this story is even more confusing because the mystery is ongoing. The mystery all started in 1953 when a bubbling hole of mud popped up through the ground on a farm. In 1953, it was about three or 400 yards that way. Yeah. And it sat there for, you know, decades. This is Sean Rizzuto, senior transportation engineer at Caltrans and father to two daughters that he wants to see get interested in science. We got along well. The farmer was aware of this mud pot, but wasn't too worried because those are actually kind of common in the area. There's a large carbon dioxide reservoir in this Salton Sea area. It's found a way up to the surface, but it's also hit a water table. So now you don't just get gas, you get a lot of water. So the Nylon Geyser started out as a mud pot, but became a mud spring. But it turns out scientists have never seen either of these move until this one. It's not a typical mud pot or a mud volcano where you just have this like small depression in the ground. So I, I think we would all classify it as a mobile mud spring. It was eventually named the Nylon Geyser, not Kyle. Despite the fact that it's neither a geyser nor a mud puddle. We're getting continuous flow of water versus a geyser like Yellowstone, but there's also steam. So there's some heat to it. This, there is no heat. You're not gonna touch it. And, you know, your hand's not gonna boil. One day in 2016, the farmer noticed it had started to move. So by 2018, it had carved out such a large sunken crumbled basin that it covered an area half the size of a football field. This is the first moment that I mentioned because in 2018, the mud spring that just the water part was well over 100 feet across and it was steadily approaching its first human civilization speed bump the union pacific train tracks so obviously the railroad had to act fast to try and save the tracks. so they brought in the engineering firm shannon and wilson who carolina works for that's when she came in and they attempted to stop the mud spring the railroad actually started putting in a large rock and the rock disappeared. This is a bucket of smooth sand with an inlet for air to bubble up through the sand. Watch what happens when I turn on the air. Some of the rubber duckies and stuff will float around, but some of the dense objects will immediately sink to the bottom as the sand starts to act strangely like a fluid. Now imagine adding some water to this and you would get something perhaps worse than quicksand. That's what's going on with the Nylon Geyser. This is one of the many reasons that you wouldn't want to fall in there. So that is why all the rocks that the railroad just threw in disappeared. They sunk, which meant that there was also no telling how deep the hole was. And that terrifying fact would very soon create a massive problem. Because by June of 2018, the mud spring had moved dangerously close to the railroad tracks. So Union Pacific installed a 140 foot wide sheet pile wall to try and block the mud puddle. And they dug it down to the insane depth of a five story building. And then they drilled wells to drain water and relieve the hydrostatic pressure. And then on the morning of October 3rd, engineers on site heard a loud crack. 
Now, while all of this is going on, recall that there's continual CO2 bubbling up. There are dangerous gases that come out of it that can be lethal. I have another experiment for you. Watch what happens when I stick a candle in this cup. It just goes out. Can you guess what's in the cup? It's carbon dioxide. I made the CO2 by mixing baking soda and vinegar, and CO2 is more dense than air, so it'll just sit there in my cup. Or at the nylon geyser, it'll just sit there over the hole, which means that if you fell in and could miraculously swim, you would quickly suffocate due to the lack of oxygen. Whew. You really don't want to fall in. In the morning yeah. sometimes, when it's cold, the gas won't rise. And so it looks like a fog. Now that CO2 is not only deadly to us, it's the unrelenting driving force of all the erosion digging thousands of square feet. And it's now bubbling up against that wall. And then the coolest part I actually missed was when the mud spring was right up against the sheet pile wall. We'd noticed the piles deflecting towards the spring. And so I started making observations. Okay, well, it's tilted this much, or now I'm seeing cracks behind the sheet piles. Now I'm hearing hissing sound like a gas trying to escape. Now I'm seeing liquid come out of these cracks. I gotta get this train out of here. Yeah, move this train out. Yeah, the train has to leave. Hey, let's pull the train out of here. Just get, this, just get the train out of here. It is about 1.20. Um, this just happened here in the last five minutes. There was preceded by a bunch of gas coming out. We backed up and this whole area just collapsed. It's cracking right here. We're still losing it. And sure enough, there was a huge explosion and the mud spring had gone beneath the sheet piles and it eroded, eroded, eroded to the surface and then let off all of this pressure. And I was not there for that. Within an hour of my leaving the site, now there was this new mud spring on the other side of the sheet pile walls. The mud spring had jumped beneath a 75 foot deep sheet pile wall. That's what the crack of the engineers had heard was. This whole thing reads like a novel, <laughs> but it wasn't even the craziest part. The final moment that I wanted to share with you was when the water and mud unexpectedly shot 100 feet into the air. But first, we gotta have an ending to the biography of Kyle so far. So it passed the sheet pile wall, which was crazy. And then it eventually got to the railroad and passed the tracks. And so now it's between the tracks and the highway and it's not slowing down. So just like the railroad, the highway is currently having to get creative. And that is what I talked to Sean about. It was so interesting. The specifics of the issues that they solve. There's no other location in California. Actually, to my knowledge, this is the only mud pot that is actually moving in the world. It wasn't just like, oh, dig around a mud puddle. The gas comes up and then it goes out. These people are coming up with creative solutions for problems I wouldn't even have thought of. Not a civil engineer, so I've never thought about whether you had to consider the permeability of asphalt or concrete for gases, but is oh, this yeah. something that you already... No, that's unique. <laughs> Normally we don't worry about that. We just, wow. it's not an issue, but with the amount of gas that's being vented through here, that's the solution that we came up with. I didn't consider that they might want to preserve the current road and that there's a school nearby and it would be cut off and the kids wouldn't get to school. Plus it's a major artery for agriculture and the number of problems just kept on piling on as I listened. There's all different types of stuff that we deal with as engineers that, you know, we have solutions for. Mm -hmm. um, there's really no solution for this. The nylon geyser can't be stopped, just worked around. But sometimes even the workarounds didn't go as planned. It was when we were drilling a relief well. I think I'd been there almost like 10 hours. I was about to, sh to change shifts. I was explaining to him, okay, this is the type of material I've been seeing. And then we were at about 325 feet below the ground surface. Then all of a sudden, psh Drilling mud just came out of the hole over 60 feet. I mean, that's that that's how much pressure has been built up and we hit a pressure pocket and it just shot all this drilling mud and the drilling mud was there to basically facilitate the fact that if we did hit a pocket, the drilling mud would be so heavy that it would, you know, we, it would allow us to keep drilling. Well, that obviously did not happen. Because it shot out of the hole. Now, there's only one important question left. Why did the nylon geyser sit there for 63 years and then suddenly move? Why now? All we can say is that, you know, it started moving, I think at the tail end of 2016, which coincided with some earthquake swarms in the area from the Brawley seismic zone. So since there's a major fault line nearby, earthquake swarms happen and then Kyle started moving and maybe the earthquakes were the cause. We don't know. One really good theory for why this is happening is that it's probably been coming up at an angle. So the path underground from the CO2 source or the well with the water is probably at an angle and it wants to come straight up. 
because nature wants to take the straightest path. It's coming up a structure and it's like, ooh, I can get over here and I can get up, but wait, I'm sourced over here. So now I wanna try and get back to over here. It's a really creative theory, but it's not necessarily right. Do we have any other ones? Can we have any other ones? Why is it unique to this area? It just gives you all these other questions. We thought we could re re-divert it or redirect it, but you can't. You know, you can't stop Mother Nature. If you think this is one of the most unusual topics I've ever investigated, you're right. <laughs> it's also my first video back since I parted ways with PBS and went independent. And I'm so nervous about the future of Physics Girl, but going forward, I'm super excited. You can expect some things like this that are not so physics-y, but also some physics, of course. If you want a teaser for my next video, it's all about the crazy questions that pop up when you learn about the universe expanding. Like, what is it expanding into? But I want to do that video and the rest of them in the same immersive way as this one. So we visited the observatory where it was originally discovered that the universe is expanding by Hubble a hundred years ago. So if you want to follow along with that and support the journey, the biggest thing you can do is to consider subscribing. But if you'd like to further support content from a girl who gets weirdly obsessive and curious about things and then cannot help herself but share the things she learns. Check out my Patreon community. And if you've been supporting my Patreon, thank you so much because it's been crucial to, I don't know, buying some apples and granola for my team when I drag them across the desert to see a mud puddle. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun making it and I'm excited for what's next. Happy physicsing.